You know what you should do? You should follow me on Twitter at Bromo018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, Bromo18 here. I hope you are all doing well. Today, we've got a video that is a, a little bit different, really. Something I haven't done uh, as of yet, essentially, on this channel. Just wanted to have a, a discussion, I guess, uh, about the uh, the Pez franchise. You know, the, the current state of the Pez franchise. Um, you know, perhaps what the future holds, where, um, you know, sort of the problems lie and stuff. Because uh, there are a lot, and that's really sort of uh, the direction that we're going to be coming at this today. Um, you know, and just sort of how things might, or at least we hope uh, they might change in the future, because um, you know, I think PES 2019 really, uh, we all, we all generally, uh, anyone who, who plays PES, including myself, uh, think that you know it's it's been far from ideal. You know, it's been far from ideal. Uh, there's been a lot of issues from range of them, uh, whole different things. Obviously, what was covered on on my channel a lot was. The whole, you know, releases of stadiums and stuff, you know, Ibrox, Celtic Park, uh, the Monaco Stadium, etc. Um, and, you know, how delayed there was. It ended up being in February 2019. Um, with the, and the game was released in August 2018. So, there was there's a lot of um, a lot of problems this season. And, and, yeah, so as I say, that's been covered on this channel a lot, really. Um, so, we're not going to go into detail too much about that. But it is things along those roads. It's very much off the cuff. This isn't a scripted video. It's just something that I really want to just get out there and talk about and engage the reactions from you guys. I want to hear what people think, um, whether it's me just sort of barking up the wrong tree or uh, or if perhaps it is a, a wide felt thing. It is, you know, from... I've looked on social media, uh, the Pez Reddit, etc. I, I, you know, I always do on a regular basis. And um, it is the sort of the common uh, feedback that I am getting from other Pez fans that they are also frustrated uh, with with how it is currently, with how Konami um, are dealing with this, uh, how the development team and the social media team uh, are dealing with all sorts of issues. So yeah, we really want to talk about talk about that. Um, as you'll see, it's got a game going on in the background, just for your uh, just for your pleasure, really. Into my AC Milan, I was controlling AC Milan uh, in this one. So yeah, just uh, just for the background. But yeah, really, I want to talk about uh, I suppose the gameplay and the backlash that has been to the gameplay. First of all, you know, there's been a lot of issues, and they have attempted to patch it out along the way, uh, more so in some areas than others. Um, in particular, what people were noticing right from the start is um, this. AI issue, uh, particularly low crosses from the AI, just so overpowered. It was just the only way the the opposition would score against you, and uh, it would work a lot of the time. You know, they were extremely powerful and accurate. Defensive line uh, was just sort of out of shape. Um, they have patched it out recently. There was a data pack 5.0, which came out uh, in March, which does appear to have uh, have addressed. At least some of the issues in the gameplay, but I think you know really we we approach the problem right there. We're in March, you know we are what seven we are well, as of recording this and releasing this. We're eight months into the game's lifespan now, and that's how long it's taken you to uh, to address this issue that has been just the overriding uh, for and feedback of the fans, the criticism, at least of the gameplay itself. And, and that is a problem in itself. You know, that is the sort of most fundamental issue is that we're having, you know, we're finding critiques, I guess, criticisms of the game, game whether it be gameplay, whether it be, you know, sort of the, the actions that the company takes, um, the moves that they make, etc. Um, whether it be, you know, whatever it may be, um, we find these problems and they're not being addressed, at least on time or at all. You know, there's so many issues that we find, and, it, and it's such a shame, you know, because there are plenty of positive aspects of this of this game um, that you know it makes us you know love these these sort of games and, and enjoy playing them at least sometimes. Um, but it, it just gets overshadowed by these sort of things, and um, it wasn't just the low crosses. Uh, I myself, like quite a few people, I know uh, a friend who I play uh, a co-op uh, my club with. Uh, picks on this as well is the just sort of, sort of the input lag, uh, and what I mean by that is the delay when you're playing. 
say you want to turn, you want to get a one one touch pass off, you want to get passes off quickly, etc. Uh, it just doesn't happen. The, the, it's slow, it's lethargic, the turning really slow, feels like it's done in phases, the animations, like they can't turn fluidly on a 360 degree angle, it like jumps, um, things like the passing, you, you press pass and you want them to get it away quickly, you want to play quick interchanges, and they're just so far behind, it's really slow, you know, a lot of, a lot of issues like that, which I think have just sort of plagued the game, and it, it's not just this year, you know, that has been a problem for quite a few years in PES, but yeah, there's there's been a range of things that just haven't been uh, addressed, and it's such a shame because I feel like they've got a brilliant opportunity now to, um, as you see, Cotroni comes uh, comes very close there. He should have should have put that away. That's for sure. Should have at least hit the target. Um, but yeah, like with the problem that EA are suffering at the moment, they are suffering sheer backlash, so much criticism, not just because of FIFA, because of all their games, and it's coming back to bite them in FIFA um, in particular. P Konami have now got an unbelievable opportunity to say to people, you know, right, we are the game, you know, this is us, you come over to us. So, you know, and, and for example, in career mode, you know, I'll use this as a, this is a prime example EA have been under enormous amounts of negative criticism from people like me, but you know, just the majority of fans uh, about how they haven't touched career mode, barely touched it, you know, with a barge pole maybe, um, because they just they know it. Ultimate Team is their cash cow, and, and career mode doesn't make them any money off microtransactions, and as a result, career mode fans are disillusion disillusioned now. It is the perfect time for Konami to reach out to those disillusioned fans. And there are hundreds of thousands of people uh, who are disillusioned. Probably more than that. There's probably millions. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying this off the top of my head. They, they have the chance to reach out to all of those disillusioned fans and say, Hey, look, we still, you know, we still care about offline players. We have our own version of career mode, Master League. You know, it's constantly evolving come over to us but the problem is they are also ending up culpable as you see Kate the day scores for uh, Inter Milan there they are also um you know responsible for for having a similar attitude you know we all it's been a thing for Pez fans as well that Master League has barely been touched and that is that is mismanagement in my opinion you have an incredible opportunity um to, to take number one spot, at least in terms of offline play. And uh, you're not seizing the opportunity like this season. What did we get? We got the International Champions Cup, which, you know, great, that's fine. But um, it's not really something that people were, were looking for. Um, it's, it's a great addition, nevertheless, although it, it's ended up being a hindrance because it's the only thing you can play in pre-season, nothing else. Uh, and then they said, you know, they'd rectified the transfer system, but they hadn't because... You know, for anyone who'd watched my uh, Glasgow Rangers Master League series earlier on um, in the year, you'll notice that we found all these insane transfers that were just beyond the realm of possibility. Like we had Trent Alexander-Arnold transferring to Celtic for you know a low price, like um, eight million or something, and then he was go and then he went to a French league team the season after. And it's just like, in what world would that possibly happen? You know. Um, so they hadn't really rectified the, the transfer system, so there was there was nothing, there was there was next to no additions um, of any real substance, and you know it, it's just really frustrating because I want to see Konami address these issues, and you know suddenly they implement these these changes to Master League, and say, uh, and then as I say, reach out to those disillusioned fans and and be like you know come to us we we've got your back we've we are in charge of, of offline play in the football simulation gaming uh, gaming world and industry and um, you know and they haven't done that and it's it's such a shame it's such a shame um, and sort of building on that you know they announced one thing that was a positive obviously out of the loss uh, losing the Champions League and just all the UA for licenses um, they then added a whole host of other leagues and competitions that were licensed, which was brilliant. You know, it was great to see much more being added. That's always been a FIFA fan's main uh, 
you know, sort of point of reference as to why they don't buy Pez SA. Just, just not enough teams, not enough leagues. They were working on that. That is great. That's fantastic. And hopefully they build on that again uh, with, you know, the future Pez Pro Evos to come. Uh, as Cotrone gets a goal there with a good finish indeed, what he does best. Um, so they've added all these leagues. And you think, well, the reason you do that, other than to try and reach out to fans of those teams, is for Master League. Because in my club, it doesn't really matter if you've got much of the leagues or not, because there's not much emphasis on it. You know, chemistry doesn't come into play, you know, in terms of matching the same clubs and the same players in the same leagues and stuff together. Um, and they don't really put much emphasis on what club a player plays for. You'll see it on one of the pages. But, um, you know, it's not like they have an ultimate team where they have a badge on the front and you can see the club. So the main reason for you to be adding those sort of things is for Master League enjoyment. So why is it then that you would add those leagues uh, and purchase the licenses, but then not leave Master League essentially untouched? You know, I think that's really strange. I think it's a breakdown of, of strategy, really, because if I'm, you know, one of the... Um, one of the people higher up in the hierarchy of, of Konami or, or you know, winning 11, whatever it may be, um, I'm saying that's great and that's going to supplement our, our Master League changes. And now what have we got for Master League? What improvements are we seeing to that mode um, to build on it, to make it better, to make it, you know, more, give it more depth, etc. Um, but there's, there's only one side of that. There's only those leagues being added and not enough to Master League. And I think that's, that's really strange. And, and like I say... Again, it's just a chance to differentiate themselves from EA and, and reach out to players and say, you know, we've come to our game. But it hasn't really been done. And um, and I think that is, as we, you know, I don't know what I'm going to title the video yet, actually. As I say, this was off the cuff. It was something along the lines of, you know, the current state of Pez. And I think that's where we're at. You know, there's a lot of sort of breaking down in communication in more ways than one. You know, in terms of the social media, people are fans are constantly trying to reach out to uh, to the Pez team on social media um, uh, about various different issues, whatever it may be, and they get no response, and they will constantly, um, you know, probe them for it, and they'll just get they'll just get ignored, and that is just not a way to treat your fan base. You know, these guys are the lifeblood of your game. Without these people purchasing the game and investing in it. Um, you you have nothing you have no reason to make the game in the first place you know it's like me with my youtube if i've got none of you guys to watch my videos um then i have nothing that there, there would be no reason for me to to upload these to youtube you know um and it's and it's just the same situation so yeah i think there's a lot of faults and i think there needs to be uh, some sort of um i guess i'm not sure what the word is but i guess an overhaul um, and just sort of look back and for them to sort of analyse themselves and see, you know, what they can improve on. And those would be the areas uh, that would need to be rectified, you know. I think one thing that, uh, you know, they they could do is, and a lot of companies, you know, don't purposely don't do this. But I think this would be great for, for their reputation, at least with the disillusioned Pez fans, which of course there are quite a lot of. And that's just to, to meet the problems head on and just be as... Um, you know, public about it as possible, detailing everything. For example, you know, scripting is <laughs> uh, quite a big topic amongst Pez fans. Again, you know, we were talking about the gameplay. Um, a lot of Pez fans, are, you know, I personally don't know whether scripting is a thing or not. I couldn't tell you. I still can't decide. Um, although I have felt like it sometimes, I don't know. You know, it could be, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, a lot of Pez fans do believe that there is at least this year in particular, PES 2019, enormous scripting issues in the game. And I think the best, you know, using that as an example, the best uh, way to tackle that problem is just meet that head on, be as public about it as possible. Because obviously, they'll get a lot of people on their Twitter and their Facebook pages, etc., saying, your game's scripted, etc., etc., so look at this, posting videos about it. Um, and, you know, they've never addressed it, never once uh, have they addressed it. I think... You know, what would be a, a really important milestone would be to just come out and, and say, either if it is a problem, if it is actually a, an issue in the game, what they're doing to tackle that issue, or if it isn't, come out and, you know, sort of show little bits behind the scenes, etc., of, of, you know, maybe coding, etc., or anything along those lines of why it isn't, and, and just sort of appease the fans. Uh, because I think that would go a long way to uh, to helping 
just their reputation at the moment because obviously there's there's, there's a lot of issues. We talk about how EA have a lot of disillusioned fans, and in particular with FIFA. Um, you know, Konami have got it as well with Pez. I think especially this year with with all the problems that have come and gone, or, or are still here. Um, you know, they have created quite a bit of um, I guess anarchy as well within the ranks. So um, it's going to be important for them to do something like that. In terms of PES 2020, I think, you know, we need a big statement. We need a massive statement from Konami. Uh, because otherwise people aren't going to hesitate to switch to FIFA, I'm afraid. It, that, that's just sort of the world, the world they are working in currently. You know, people are not going to be um, hesitant to switch from PES to FIFA um, generally. Uh, but a lot of people are hesitant to switch from FIFA to PES because obviously the, the size of the game and the reputation, etc. So that that's what they've got to work against. You know, people sort of say, well, you know, Konami, a lot smaller studio working on PES, etc. They don't have as much investment. Well, you know, you're in the wrong game. You have to, if you want to be a legitimate competitor of EA, you, you're in, you have to do more um, and you have to go all in. Um, but yeah, in terms of PES 2020, as I say, we need a big statement. There's rumours that they might be on a new game engine. We'll see about that. Um, only rumours at the moment, whispers on the Reddit, etc. But um, I think that would be massive. I think um, it could be much needed as well. And it will change up the gameplay um, somewhat for the better, hopefully, if that's true. Um, I think that is something that we uh, that we really, really need. And that, that would be going towards making a statement as we talk about as a, as a saying that's one way to make a massive statement to the fans about how you're addressing these issues uh, but we'll wait and see anyway i think you know generally there's a there's still a lot of problems and and as i say we need to see um, we need to see a lot of movement. What do you guys think, though? Let me know. It's is sort of half the reason why I've done this video to sort of get the opinion from uh, from you know my viewers, from you guys, and and let me know uh, sort of what you think about the current state of Pez. Is, are you happy with the game? Maybe what I've said is just alien to you. Um, let me know in the comment section, or are you are you disappointed? Are you really disillusioned with the game and feel oh there's you know there's a lot of work and a lot of improvement needed. Um, ahead, just let me know in the comment section, and uh, I'll get back to you. We'll we'll begin begin this discussion or continue this discussion in the comment section. But that's it, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, then do be sure to leave a like and follow me um, on Twitter as well, using the Twitter handle at Bromo018. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more regular gaming content from the likes of Pez uh, and FIFA as well. And on that note, I'm Bromo18, and I'll see you soon.